I'm comparing my real Dingwall NG3 base to the brand new GinBase 2 MIDI base plugin, just to see if I can replace my real base with a base that's on the computer. This is what my Dingwall NG3 sounds like. And this is what GinBase 2 sounds like. Did you notice a huge difference? Me neither. And if you did, you're wrong because I actually swapped them around. You actually heard Gin Base 2 first and then my real bass. I'm sure a lot of people will be in denial about it still, but I think at this point it's extremely clear that virtual bass libraries are starting to sound really, really, really close to the real thing. And now that it's been resampled from the ground up with all brand new articulations, tones, picking and finger picking modes. I think GinBase 2 is now the best example of that. I'm gonna go through how I programmed GinBase 2 for that demo song, as well as how I recorded my real bass alongside it. But if you're already set on grabbing GinBase 2 from that example alone, feel free to head over to the link both in the comments and the description below, where you can grab GinBase 2 for the cheaper introductory price for a limited time. So I wrote this little demo song and I used my real Dingwall to record the bass first. I'm not a bass player, but I try my best to play it as best as I could. And I made sure that I recorded it to the same standard that any modern producer or band would, and in my opinion should. In saying that, I was very cautious of how hard I was playing, how well I was catching the string as I was playing, how well the notes were ringing out, all that stuff. And like in all modern recordings, I also wasn't afraid to punch in certain notes on runs either, and if you didn't notice until I mentioned it just then, it means I did a good job at doing it. So how did I make Gin Bass 2 sound like my real Dingwall? Well, after that was all recorded with my real bass, I then programmed all the same notes with Gin Bass 2. I did use the picking mode because obviously I recorded it with a pick in real life, but it is worth mentioning that GinBase 2 now has the finger picked mode as well, which is awesome. I even went as far to make sure that I was using the exact same pick, exact same strings, and exact same pickup configuration as the NG2 that GinBase 2 was modeled with. To the point that I actually had to bring my bass to a tech to get the pickup swapped around and have it all rewired to make sure it was that same configuration. It should be noted that as much as I tried to get them to sound the same tonally, there's only so much that I can do to get them to sound the same in regards to tone. The recording chain, the environment, and the player are all different between me and GinBase 2, and that is definitely going to play a part in how they both sound from each other tonally. Regardless of the tone, that is not the point of this video. Tone is subjective. You guys could hate the tone that I'm about to show you. What I want you guys to listen for is how both of these examples are performed and recorded. That means things like, you know, how hard are the notes being picked, how well the articulations are being performed, and how consistent the bass playing sounds across the two. Let's listen to them side by side. So first, the real dingwall. Let's see how Gin Bass 2 sounds compared to that in isolation. Really, really close. The tone is close, but the playing and the performance is even closer. And the reason why is because of how powerful Gin Bass 2 is under the hood. Gin Bass 2 is a huge upgrade from the original Gin Bass 1, which some people still use to this day. I personally steered away from the original Gin Bass library when the newer submission audio ones came about, like Umansky Bass and Grove Bass and all that stuff. And the reason being was because those newer libraries were sampled with a little bit more detail, had more options for articulations, and that kind Kind of suited my needs a little bit more. However, Gin Base 2 has been completely resampled from the ground up, so it's now at that level where you get all that detail and all of those different features, and then some on top of that. With that, I was able to now program the exact same articulations of what I recorded on my real Dingwall NG bass. All those down picks, up picks, alternate picks, hammer-ons, pull-offs, dead notes, you name it, everything I did and recorded in that real performance was able to be replicated in Gin Base 2. And that only scratched just the surface
because as you can see, there's a stupid amount of articulations that you can program, most of which are well out of my skill level when playing a real bass. On top of that, I was even able to program Jin bass in a way where it would play the exact same fret on the exact same string for every single note I played on that real bass. In my experience, that's a really quick way to make sure that the guitar and bass are locking in as much as possible. And especially in modern metal recordings, that is absolutely pivotal. So with all that four string articulation key switching, along with the humanized knob and careful use of velocities when programming, Jinbase 2 was easily able to play back a performance that was extremely similar to my recording on a real Dingwall bass. We'll go through the bass tone, which again is the exact same across both the real bass and Jinbase 2, just to make sure that that was consistent as well. The first thing in the chain is the FG Stress Compressor in Virtual Mix Rack, and this is just compressing the DI before it hits parallax on top of Virtual mix rack i am going into a limiter which again is catching the very 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 loudest peaks like when i'm really going for it it's just catching him so it doesn't get too inconsistent that then goes into the newer dsp parallax plugin where i'm dialing in the complete tone from and i am using a custom ir as well and then at the start of the post processing i'm doing a little bit of eq with fab filter pro q3 again i didn't want to go too crazy on the eq because i wanted it to be consistent between the real bass and gin bass 2 so very typical moves low cut high cut um low mid cut a bump around 900 and then just taking out some whistly frequencies that i was hearing Straight after that, we go into Soothe 2, which again is just catching those really kind of like whistly resonances that pop up every now and then, um, especially in like a live performance. This is so good because it moves dynamically with the track and it's not static. We're then compressing the distorted bass signal through Double Tap, another submission audio plugin. This plugin is awesome. It takes like 15 seconds to dial in. You just compress your low end and then you compress the whole signal. Literally takes 15 seconds. After Double Tap, because we did take out quite a lot of high end, I'm just kind of lifting the overall top end of the whole bass track um, with this high lift in virtual mix rack and then to pin it down even more again at the very end of the chain i'm using another limiter you probably can tell that i really like my bass to be super solid and not dynamic at all but again this is barely doing anything like it's catching the hardest notes it's it's barely working and again this is what it sounds like in the mix Jinbase 2 is the virtual bass library that a lot of people, myself included, have been waiting for for a very, very long time. Not only do we have a perfectly recorded, perfectly in tune, perfectly intonated, freshly strung Dingwall bass at our fingertips, but we are then able to manipulate that through the four string key switching, through all the different articulations, through the humanized knob, through the different velocities that are recorded with it to make it spit back a performance that is up to the standard that any decent bassist should be recording their bass to anyway. And judging from the various Sound examples in this video, I think it's safe to say that they sound really, really close, borderline identical in the mix. Feel free to head over to the link in the pinned comment and the description where you can grab Gym Base 2 for that cheaper introductory price for a limited time only. This does help me out as well as I do get a little bit of a kickback from it, which I can then put straight back into the channel to make more videos like this for you guys. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.